Welcome to the NBA Coast to Coast podcast brought to you by thelines.com. Coming to you from the West Coast, Josh Lander, joined as always by Nate Weitzer on the East Coast. And we've got a Tuesday night slate here for you guys. In this one, taking a look at the Lake Show. They are in NOLA, taking on New Orleans. Also got an eight-game slate for you, so we got another game video and our player props up for you. Make sure to like and subscribe to that page. Also want you to head to thelines.com. You can check out all the great cotton content we have up there right now about the NBA. Uh, also some March Madness up there for you as we get into full swing in basketball this March. Uh, also have the odds finder tool up there. You can make sure you're getting the best odds available to you from all those bets you want to make in the NBA this season. Nate, let's go ahead and get into this eight game slate and then talk about these Pellies and Lake Show. Yeah, it's a getting into full tank season two. So we got Cavs minus eight at Charlotte and the Pistons plus 13 at Washington. Then some competitive games Nuggets pick them at Toronto. The Nuggets trying to right that ship and the Raptors finally returning home. The Lakers are also in a pick them here at the Pelicans. The Nets plus one at, at the Thunder. Uh, SGA expected to play there. Magic minus five at Spurs, Bucks in a pick at the Suns, both teams on a back-to-back there. And then the Knicks down to minus two and a half at Portland. Um, total's kind of low at 228. We'll talk about that game in another episode where we're looking at the Lakers and Pelicans, and there's tons of revenge narratives to look at always when these two teams meet. Centering around Anthony Davis. <laughs> Who you know started his first his his revenge campaign against the Pels with some monster games, then was kind of quiet for a while as the Lakers were were true contenders. But now they when they've needed him more and when he's on this general revenge campaign, thirty one points per game, twelve rebounds in two meetings. Those those games have been split. Those games have both gone over, but. I don't really buy that we're going to see another high-scoring game here, mainly because Brandon Ingram, the other side of that revenge narrative, is questionable with the ankle. And he wasn't playing well before he turned his ankle against Dallas. Uh, In his last nine, he had a 105 offensive rating. He didn't play well in the rematch at L.A., which actually, now that I think about it, might not have gone over if the Pels only had 102 points. And, And Trey Murphy, after balling out in NOLA, in that shootout, he was a non-factor with two points. He's coming off a 41-point game against that horrendous Blazers defense that we'll talk about in another uh, game. So it's with the Pels, you really worry about their ability to score. Um, I mean, the, even in this their last five at home, um, they're actually two and three. Not very impressive. Scoring 107. The pace was much slower than when they played these last three here during a homestand and. They've hit, you know, the, in these last three, they their offense has really spiked in, in the margins you look for, like 15 threes at 44%. That they're, they're a terrible three-point shooting team otherwise. 30 assists, playing a little faster. so And so they have been able to pull out two of their last three wins like that. But I don't think any of that is really happening against this Lakers defense. That is, you know, since it became nut-crunching time, so to speak, since the, the trade deadline, since they really upgraded – Third best defensive rating, second best three-point defense, and then number one limiting free throws. And then on the other end, especially since LeBron went down, just a parade to the free throw line, climbing on Anthony Davis's back, number one free throw rate. And Nola's given up the eighth highest uh, free throw attempt rate here in their last 13. That's a a sample since since Ingram came back uh, for what that's worth. I mean... Even when the Lakers were able, I mean, when the Pels were able to beat the Leeds Lakers with 131 points, uh, there's there's definitely some some spikes here that we're talking about. 62% on two point shooting, only hit nine threes. Ingram had the game of his life basically in his return uh, to action there, and you're talking about a supporting cast with the Lakers that I'm sure you're going to dive into more of the differences. But we, I mean, Bron and AD both good games. You got then you got Pat Bev and Schroeder and 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 Russ and and uh, Rui all you know two of those guys Schroeder and Rui now are in roles that are much more comfortable for them they were they're not asked to be like the number one <clears throat> option in a starting lineup or the, you know in Rui's case just a starter at all it's now you got D'Angelo Russell who I incorrectly uh, slandered ahead of that Raptors matchup. It's just really impressive that the Lakers were able to beat those Raptors and carve them up um, while AD was basically benched 
because yeah. he was just kind of ineffective. Um, <clears throat> and they just didn't necessarily need him. And and then, so, I mean, now in a matchup against a Pels team that he, he can certainly exert his will on him and has with that extra motivation. And it's just the, the, the free throw margin we're talking about. Look, just, just to conclude. Yeah. I mean, just definitely like the Lakers a little bit more here in this spot. Don't trust the Pelicans as they continue to flounder here. Uh, and lean under when these two teams get together. We're talking about the we're talking about the fifth and seventh best scoring defenses over the last month or so. Uh, so two twenty six is a little high, and I would lean under on that. Yeah, I would lean on it too. I, I think we're in agreement here. You know, um, the, the feeling is the, the the Lakers and and somewhat of an under. But I mean, if Bi doesn't play, like just the Lakers, really, I think you know they're getting a little bit of value. Like I told you, because of the fact that they they played this this Knicks team pretty well. Uh, a Knicks team the other day on Sunday that they played well without um, without. Jalen Brunson playing against them. They they were kind of in control of that game. They had things the way they want them. Julius Randle just went off. And and hopefully uh, you follow one of us on Twitter. I was talking about Julius Randle that morning because I was like another revenge for Julius Randle who just goes off uh, against his former team, especially when LeBron's not there. Like it's, he's going to be the second best player on the floor at all times. AD did his thing. And, and really the Lakers and what their sort of current identity is when LeBron is not playing for them that's that's kind of what they were against that Knicks team. They were, it was a low-scoring game. They were able to play pretty good defense because the Knicks make it very easy to play defense by not getting any assists, which we'll also talk about in this Portland game for a second um, that they have tonight. But you, regardless, that is the identity of, of this Lakers team now is being able to hold teams to 110 or less, which they've done basically six out of their last eight games um, since losing LeBron. Uh, the only times they even went allowed a team to go over, they beat the, the Thunder, allowing 117 on the the road and then they uh they let up 112 against those raptors in that win also at home um on the road maybe a little bit more uh, uh they score a bit more it seems like there's a little bit more pace but really last time they were playing on the road lebron was around for most of those games and now just the addition of, of jared vanderbilt as we talk about and even malik beasley who has been uh above average on defense defending the wing with with alongside him um you know they, they're making up for whatever d'angelo russell can't do on defense that's for sure and delo had a nice game the other night random which is what he does once every three to four games is look like a guy that you, you think should be a point guard, but then those other three to four, um, he doesn't, uh, you know, so I'm, I'm not really necessarily saying that he's necessarily the biggest strength, but without BI, like what, what do you expect from this team? Right? Like without one or without two of their three that they need between he and, and CJ and obviously Zion, who we haven't seen in forever. Um, this team doesn't win. That's why after, you know, being what they were 27 or 20, yeah, 27 and 13. Uh, and since that time, they're like 17 games under 500, one of the worst teams in the league for that reason and, and you look at like you said bi wasn't playing super well um but even in in their last five while they weren't playing super well on offense um i think this the, the pace was even you know even slower because that's what they want to do when he's out there giving them another mid-range shooter um alongside cj which is why they've been in, over the last three weeks anyway since bi was in there mostly they've been in the top five in terms of points coming off of the mid-range which also i like once again for uh for this lakers team it's something we've talked about since Rui came over and jared varen rebuilt and all these subs uh, and all these role players for them is that they finally have wing defense. If you look at how how many points they were hemorrhaging around 17 to 20 feet, 15 to 25, you know, 20 feet, whatever, inside just inside the three point line, um, they were in the bottom five in terms of allowing you know points and the, and the opponent field goal percentage, and they've climbed all the way back up uh, to get into like the 12th in 12th best on the season. At, you know, after being that bad for the majority of it, so just in a couple months, they've been able to at least up that defense enough um, to be able to really stop these two pointers and exactly what Nola wants to do because they still aren't making threes. Although in their last five, Nola has jumped up to being you know scoring the hitting the 13th most threes per game in that time, which is very high for them because they've been about 25th for most of the season. So um, that just means guys like Trey Murphy, who hit nine the other night, right, is like kind of skewing what we're talking about here. So all these things tend to, to inflate these totals uh, and the projections for it tonight. So I think the under is a good play. And, and if you're going to be playing good defense, I think the Lakers can score more easily on, on the Pellies and vice versa. Yeah, I mean, you ask <clears throat> where are they going to turn without Ingram? It's, it's Trey Murphy who's really – a new age NBA player in the sense that everything is either full on attack the rim or shoot a three and the Lakers are doing a good job defending both those things. I know they're fourth they're in terms of paint points allowed, uh, but also fourth view second chance points. 
when AD is out there. I mean, they certainly have a rim protector. Their road numbers are, yeah, they're, they are definitely worse since the start of February. They've only had two games, as you mentioned, without Braun on the road. And I'm really looking at AD's performance in those ones, 29 and 17, getting to the free throw line more often. So that's why he's in there in player props. You can look at a player performance double with him, uh, different ones, double-double or or 28 plus, 30 plus points. Uh, because, I, yeah, I think he will have his way here on both sides of the ball. He's get, now getting a little extra rest after sitting out that fourth quarter against Toronto. <clears throat> and, yeah, it's just like, what, yeah, where are the Pelicans going to find their source of offense against all these rangy defenders that the Lakers can now throw at them and and a pretty good offensive system that's not just entirely based on AD. It does seem like, oh, with LeBron out, they just got to feed him over and over. Not necessarily the case. Now they got D'Lo back, who, who you know, we, we slandered for his two-way play, and he's still a, a very effective offensive player and is someone, is, is a tool for, <clears throat> for Darvin Ham to use to to actually get some, run some good things and, and get um you know high quality looks that are going to be the key tonight. Yeah, no, for sure. And I think on the other side, I, I'm not saying New Orleans is in any way, shape, or form tanking. They're still throwing their guys out there. But when Bi is not out there, I mean, they're not even playing uh, Jonas Valanciunas really anymore. He's coming back from injury a little while ago, but at this point, he's still playing fewer than twenty minutes uh, a game because they're just throwing out the same lineup um, each time. And Trey Murphy's getting all the way up to about thirty-seven minutes a game uh, at this point. And I'm not saying playing Trey Murphy is tanking by not playing Jonas. I'm just saying like you have a, a starting center that could be helping you, uh, you know, in a lot of ways on offense as well, especially the way he was hitting threes. Uh, and, and it doesn't seem that they want to go that route. They're playing Jackson Hayes more than him, Josh Richardson. So they're, they're going a different route. Obviously Herb Jones and Trey Murphy getting pretty much the most minutes, just throwing it out there that all their young guys that they want to get run, not a tank, but they are saying like, we want to prioritize these dudes and see what we have, especially because, who knows when the hell Zion Williamson's going to play basketball again. So that is all the time we have for you in this one. Make sure to like and subscribe to that page. Check out the other couple videos we have up for you tonight, including those player props. And that's what we see you next. Happy betting.